That's right, Courtney. Uh, what, what do you think of the press you're getting, Councillor Iveson? Third councillor joins race for mayor's job. The worst kept secret in Edmonton, maybe, <laughs> that you were going to seek this top job this fall? Yeah, it, it was. But um, uh, I've, I've certainly been thinking about it for a long time. Uh, I made a decision some time ago to run. But, uh, you know, timing is everything in politics. And yesterday was a fantastic day to announce. Very positive reception overall. Um, and uh, and the team is growing by leaps and bounds. People are signing up. People are donating. The website's just going crazy. Facebook's going crazy. Um, old friends of mine from around the country, from my old uh, uh, journalism days, are uh, you know writing in, and they're they're so like this is going national, at least among my old friends. So it's really lovely to hear from people I haven't heard from in a long time, who are excited and and whose support I have. I want to ask you in, in a minute about the role that you think maybe social media or new media might play in this upcoming election. But but first, I want to take a step back. I was just tweeting uh, to our viewers that you were coming up, and I said he's the young in, in the mayoral race. You said, don't, don't call me the young in. I'm the oldest 34-year-old you'll ever meet. Well, a lot of people are going to look at you and say, 34? Is he ready to, to steer a city? Yes, I am. And I can expand on that if you want. Um, I think the most relevant experience to being the mayor of Edmonton, if you haven't already been the mayor for the last term, is having been on city council. And I've been on council through two terms now, six of the most dynamic years in Edmonton's history. And I'm current on every file. Uh, I've been active on some of the most crucial files, like the region, uh, like LRT. You know, I chair the regional uh, transit committee of the capital region board. Um, you know, I'm up on everything. And, and before I was involved in city politics, my background is in uh, media, communications, government relations. Uh, I've led a national organization, was chair of the board of a multi-million dollar company. Most people don't know that. Um, you know, there's all, a few All people. relevant experience to being mayor of the city of Edmonton. One and more our, experience than most 34-year-olds would bring. I would say, one of our viewers yesterday said, didn't he go straight to council from, from school? I think a lot of people are maybe <laughs> yeah. unfamiliar with some of the involvement that you've had. But the, the thing is, in this day and age, people can go online and find out a whole lot about people. You look at what happened down in Calgary in their last municipal election, where Nahid Nenshi uh, rallied to support and found support from, let's say, the next generation or, or the young younger generation of voters found himself as maybe the unlikely candidate that secured the seat up the middle between two what were perceived to be front runners. Do you think that campaigning and, and maybe even elections themselves have, have changed? Are we maybe going to see an end to voter apathy? Is there more opportunity for a younger candidate who can maybe engage younger voters online? Is there a bigger challenge for those that are running that are maybe not as familiar with that landscape? You know, yesterday I got hundreds and hundreds of tweets and Facebook messages from people of all ages, but the one that uh, really just lifted my heart right out of my chest was, was um, uh, a young man uh, from somewhere in the north of Edmonton who said, I am so pumped. I'm not even old enough to vote yet, but I am so pumped that Don Iveson is running for mayor. So if you can get kids who aren't even old enough to vote yet excited about this race, then we're doing something right. And whether that's social media or whether it's the issues we're talking about that are important to, to younger audiences, um, that I think that's a good thing. But I think it's important to note, I mean, I spent the first two years being a city councillor being dismissed as, oh, well, you're here to represent young people. Absolutely not. I was elected by people of all ages in Ward 10 to represent all of their diverse interests. And I did that ably. Um, and, and my supporters come from all walks of life. They're all ages. Uh, certainly, I think we'll have some tools and some issues that I think younger audiences are, are going to want to plug into. But, um, you know, you look at who was at my launch yesterday, and there were all walks of life and all ages standing behind me. Uh, your fellow city councillor, Kerry Diot, was technically the first to declare his candidacy for mayor when it comes to this fall's election. But, of course, who will forget back in 2011, I guess, in a way, you kind of sort of declared because you told us in 2011 you weren't going to seek re-election for a third term as a councillor. You worried some of your supporters, I think, because they said, well, well, what does this actually mean? But have you had your sights set on the mayor's chair from the moment that you stepped into council chambers? No, 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 no. And even in 2011, when I uh, announced a little prematurely, I, I, I kind of let it slip. It was a decision my wife and I had made uh, actually that summer in 2011. Uh, I had actually tried to convince her. I said, you know, maybe I should run for, you know, be prepared to run for one more term on council. Keep that option open. And and she has always been my strongest supporter. I have her unconditional support. 
to run for mayor, but strangely enough, not to run for council. Because Why do you she, think that is? She, she drove me to run in the first place because she, she knows my potential better than I do. And so I listened to her very carefully. She's one of my most important political advisors. And she, she said, whatever you do next, you have to push yourself. Mm. And the easy thing to do would be to be a city councillor for, for another term. And uh, so we had made the decision at that point that I wouldn't run for council again, um, but hadn't made the decision to run for mayor. That's a decision we made more recently. Okay, I'm out of time, so very quickly, uh, I'm going to say in my words, uh, the difference in your politics and Councillor Diotz are very obvious. Voters can do their research and find that out themselves. But in closing, in just a few sentences, how do your politics or your platform differ from Councillor Karen Leibovici's? You know, I think Karen brings a lot of strengths to the position. Um, uh, I've enjoyed working with her. I've, I've learned a lot uh, from her. Um, I think our approach to politics isn't really that different. I think we're going to be passionate about different issues. Uh, we're going to use different uh, tools to engage people. But I think, well, you know, what Edmontonians are really looking for in this, in this election is a high-level debate about where our city goes next. This is the most focused chance we get every every few years to sit down as a city and say, what's next? And, and I think all the candidates are, are going to add to that conversation. I certainly hope they will anyway. I can't wait to be a part of that debate. It's going to be one heck of a mayoral race. Don Iveson, thanks for joining us here. You've got four choices now on the ballot, three of them current city councillors. Of course, we'll keep our finger on the pulse of this race as fall approaches. You can follow Don on Twitter, find out more about what his platform is. When we come back, news, traffic and weather, Courtney and the team set to go.